strength in the bottom of my right. feet so that my toes are actually Absolutely. going through the full range of motion. Yeah, and that's good. Yeah. So anyways, we're just uh, analyzing some stuff with this feet because you watched in the previous videos. We talked about why he came to see me in particular. He's having some referral pain, you know, kind of referencing in here, but we've established there's some tightness and tautness and mobility issues or um, immobility creeping into the components of his thigh, okay, the hip flexor attachment, and even in the posterior chain, simply because he was sitting for long periods of time in a truck working, and now that with the pandemic, he's had some more downtime too sitting. And if we did a couple of movements, we looked at his capacity for movement, there were some limitations there, so we established there's some tightness. But we can do all the exercises we want and still not have the most important thing kind of uh, working for us, and that's in particular his feet. So we got him to slip off his shoes, and we wanted to look at how his toes and his ankles were arranging the movement. And you've seen in my previous videos, we've talked a lot about this, and I have the same problems. Like if you look at my feet, they don't move very well. So it's kind of been a culprit towards a lot of my injuries and my Achilles tendon, uh, you know, my knees, my hamstrings, my quads, my hip flexors, my groin, you name it. So if we could do all the exercises we want to drain to the glute med, uh, give some mobility into the external and the internal hip mobility, I guess, accessors or movement pattern uh, muscles, if you will. But if the feet aren't connecting the movement right, and each time I get dynamic, and I'm sending that information up wrong, it's just gonna keep flaring up. So we're gonna analyze his feet. So we'll get you to actually just try to splay your toes out from one another. And when we say splay, don't splay them up, splay them away from one another. So he's getting limitations there, okay? So that more or less will creep into all the connecting components here, okay? Which is sending mixed signals of weight distribution when he needs to get more dynamic in his movement. So this is obviously somewhere where we want to look at fixing to some degree. Okay? And the right foot is definitely worse than the right. right. And if we look at his stand-up posture, posture, he's more or less turning into that external bias. So we need to get a leverage point where his feet are straight ahead. He's able to spread his toes. He's able to leverage proper neutral position. So what I really like to start people off with is not necessarily going to get into any type of comprehensive movements or stuff on the ground per se because Eventually, he's going to stand up and rise and just simply commit to movement. So he has to start learning how to actually leverage good foot and ankle control. So I have a small foot and ankle program that I give to people, and this is something that it could be part of maybe some of his warm-up. And with practice, he gets through this in a minute or two. Okay, so first thing I'm going to get you to do, standing in that proper posture now. Knees are out, pelvis is in, shoulder blades are back, even my head's back. That's earning that natural posture or that, I guess, aligned posture. I'm just gonna work on flaring my toes up to my face. I'm not gonna look at them either. Just wanna get in the habit of using some of those points. Okay, maybe 10 or 15 seconds. Then I'm gonna take those toes and now I'm gonna crunch them. Curl them? Yeah, crunch them. Like how much? As much as you can handle. And you can alternate to so go all of them comprehensively on one leg, all of them comprehensively on the other. Good. Excellent. Okay, and again, you can hear cracking and popping. He's actually working these tissues and getting them to move more intensely or more intentionally. Okay, awesome. Now try to just take all your toes and flex them to your face. Try not to rock in your heels. The weight still stays in the balls of your feet. It's just your toes working for a three to five count. The tripod. Yeah, and I'm gonna crunch them underneath for three to five. Good. Flex them up for three to five. Flex them down for three to five. I only need like two or three sets of this, okay? Another good one to help build some more response in the context of a footprint. I can either keep my feet here or more advanced, I put my feet together. And I'm gonna do the Michael Jackson and lean forward. Okay. Sticking my nose out and I'm gonna come back. And I'm gonna find those end ranges of motion where my ankles and my feet get so immobile I fall over. And again, I'm earning more or less tension in some of these points. And I'm leaning as far as I can, I can even go back a bit. So I need to find where my end range is right now. I need to find where that control is. Because when you're moving dynamically, you're just reacting out of these positions. You don't know that this end range is causing a lot of damage or inflammation when your end range is limited. And then you're trying to transition out of that over a period of time. You don't feel it right away, but you will feel it. So we have to find some of those end range positions. And we'll see how his body starts to react. Maybe it starts doing this again. Okay, so that tells us there's some more stuff we gotta add into this equation to help his ankles and his feet become more responsive, have more intentional control and stability at end ranges or extreme positions. Okay, 
So that's just a good drill I can throw in there. The most important thing now is to, again, earn dynamic mobility. So what I like to do is just toe sprints. And remember, toe sprint doesn't involve just my feet. I'm gonna get my arms to get involved too. So I come up with my toe and I sprint. And I'm earning my pelvis position. I'm pushing my toes on the ground. Okay? I'm looking at where the knee tracks. If the knee's doing this a lot, I'm not getting full extension on the big toe. He does like I do on his left foot. His right foot wants to kick out. No wonder he's having issues around here. So what I want you to work on is when you get here, try not to turn over on the foot. And use your full footprint and push through the big toe or track straight ahead. Doesn't want to do this too much. Okay? And you're earning the pelvis position and shoulder blades is important here too. They're all engaged in a way that they're activating. You're not getting lazy. It's not like this lady doing this. Mm -hmm. It's more like they're all engaged and I'm pushing into the ground and then I'm earning that rotation back. And it's all comprehensive my whole body is working. Because I feel it in my glutes and everything. Yeah. So we have to have that component. And as soon as we cued those extra components, it's getting more flaring or more extension on the big toe. And it's not flaring out as much. It's still going to happen to some degree, but we're getting a little better there. So we're making it more aware. Okay. And again, each of these exercises, we're taking our time because we're doing an educational video, each of these exercises are going to take 10 to 15 seconds, okay? Now, that's good linear movements with faster intensity or faster movements or faster tempo. Now, let's look at extreme ranges of motion for maybe an internal flow position. And you filmed this with me lots mm -hmm. in the back of the day. And then we're going to turn over to that extreme internal position. And I need a counterbalance. So I'm earning that high position where I'm almost rolling my ankle this way, and then the opposite. When I get the hang of it, I'm just gonna pick up the pace. Remember, my upper body provides the counterbalance so I don't actually roll it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's add that in there. Think your abs are tight, and when I throw my leg over to the side, my arm to throw it in the same conviction with the same amount of weight distribution or tension, and then I swing back. Okay. And he's a taller guy and he's had issues in some knee injuries, so it's okay if he kind of sits into it. He doesn't have to stand very rigid where there's a separation of tension here. What he actually wants to do is ground his force and be in control. So any type of movement is very stable. So in the context of that, I'm here. My weight's downward. Now coming up, I'm actually sitting into it a bit. Try it on the bad leg. Okay. Slow and steady. And once you get the hang of it, you can pick up the pace. What we're doing is we're getting to that end range, but we're learning how to control that end sequence. So it doesn't keep collapsing on us. And he needs the space in his ankles again to be able to provide control or stability in those said sections again, which he's simply not getting. His body just reacts. It's tougher for the taller people. That's just how she goes. Gravity, you know? Yeah. Okay. Good stuff. So another oldie but goodie everybody forgets about. So we looked at linear motions, but in the extreme, right? Extreme linear here, extreme linear here. Extreme, I guess, dynamic, but still one direct angle. Yeah, so now we have to talk about comprehensively putting it together. What's an oldie but goodie? the knee rotations, and I place my hands here and I want to earn as far as my angles will allow me. I want to get my knees as far in front of the toes as possible and I have to extend them back and straight again. So I need to earn that capability. I do it slow and earn the longer ranges of motion through that position. I do it for three or four revolutions one way and then I flip the script and I go the other way. And then typically speaking, now there's gonna be a little bit more proprioception and suppleness into the tissues where they get their spring back, which is exactly what they should be there for. Okay, so those are a good starting sequence to help his feet get a little bit more responsive. And then in turn, because he's having a little bit of that foot profiling issue or biases, it tells us not only is he having some tightness issues there, but probably some weakness issues. So we're gonna get really specific with some of the calf raises we'll do to help you strengthen the big toe arrangement, because that connects into the hip flexor and allows us to will a hip extension or takes away from that and becomes compensatory where the lower back takes over. A lot of people have lower back issues, especially if they've been sitting for a long period of time. Stay tuned for those videos as well.